Hey, this is Ross with my partner, Bob. We have a show called Worldview Matters. And Ross, as you know, we believe that everything in life is somehow related to how people view the world around them. Our show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Also available on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 9th of July. I'm James Spann. Showers should be fewer in number today, and uh, but they'll increase again later in the week. Tropics are in play. We're watching Chantal. That might be an issue for parts of the southeast United States early next week. So a lot of issues today. So let's get in there and take a look. We'll start with some of the Skycam shots around the network. These were captured early this morning at the insane hour of 5 a.m., that's a look at Regents Field in downtown Birmingham. The Barons wrapped up a home series uh, last night. And, boy, they were pretty lucky during that rainy spell. They, they got all the games in and really dodged the heavier rain out there. Hey, look at Coleman. They are foggy this morning. That's our sky cam at the uh, water plant just to the east of downtown Coleman, overlooking US 278. And we'll go way down south. That's the Gulf Shores sky cam. Uh, really, today looks pretty good. Today and tomorrow, uh, that might be the uh, best uh, sun. And then as the uh, week rolls along, uh, showers and storms will probably increase late this week and over the weekend with an upper low, a little tropical upper tropospheric trough passing through the region. And then uh, Chantal might be an issue uh, next week. We'll talk about that as we go. Uh, there's the uh, big picture this morning. The heat bubble is west of the state. Primary westerlies are up north. We've got a moist air mass, and we're kind of a typical summer deal today. Yes, a few pop-up showers this afternoon. And again, there's that uh, tut low that's uh, over the Bahamas. That's primarily an upper-level feature. Watch warning map this morning. Uh, not much happening around the nation. That's a heat advisory for areas out there around Wichita and Kansas City and Tulsa. Severe weather possibilities, slight risk. That's the standard risk today for parts of the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest. Tomorrow... Slight risk along a surface boundary that uh, runs from Little Rock up to uh, Cincinnati, Buffalo, New York, Pittsburgh. And on day three, this is uh, Thursday, there's no formal risk, but we do note the low end 5% severe weather possibilities over much of Alabama. And that's with a surface boundary dropping in here from the north. Now, this is rain for the next seven days. This carries us all the way through Tuesday morning of next week. And you can see the numbers are starting to ramp up across the southeast United States. And uh, we've got a number of issues. We've got the surface front on Thursday. we got the upper low this weekend and Chantal early next week. And uh, those numbers will be refined as all of this becomes more clear. Speaking of Chantal, there's a look at the system this morning nearing the Windward Islands. Pretty low latitude storm, and it's kind of ragged looking. Uh, the, here's the problem. This thing is racing along at about 25 to 30 miles an hour. That is a fast moving storm. And uh, the, the circulation is trying to outrun the thunderstorms, the convection. So it's kind of lopsided and looks discombobulated this morning. Uh, look at guidance modeling. Most models are in pretty good agreement. They bring it right on top of Hispaniola. And that's, that's another question. Can this thing survive the journey across the mountainous island? I don't know. It, if it does, it'll hang in there over the Bahamas, and then an upper high north of the system should bend it back toward the southeast coast of the United States. You don't see a lot of systems come in that way, uh, but they can. Uh, here's a look at the ensemble guidance, and uh, again, it's got the general idea of this thing really coming in toward Jacksonville, and again, mainly it's going to be a rainmaker, we think. Uh, and ultimately, it might be an issue here next week. Now, the intensity guidance all of a sudden uh, is coming up. Uh, the models, you know, keep it hanging in there and some weaken it across Hispaniola, which more than likely will happen. But most models keep this thing alive. And now you got a number of them ramping this thing up to a Category 1 hurricane. So maybe it might be more than a bag of rain uh, as it comes up into the Bahamas and approaches the southeast United States coast. Um Look at analogs, top 10 analogs. Uh, you can see that uh, really you don't see a lot of recurving storms with a low-latitude system like that. A uh, number of them uh, do uh, come up through the Gulf. Uh, but again, we, we are in an anomalous pattern this summer. Understand, in this case, looking at analogs might not be the best idea. But it's always interesting to look 
Again, we note Betsy still shows up from uh, 1965. You've got uh, uh, Bonnie from 2004. That was a weak tropical storm that came up toward Panama City. I was actually down there for that one. Uh, here's the official track from the Hurricane Center. This thing comes right on top of Hispaniola uh, tomorrow night. And we'll see how it emerges off that island. Then it cuts across the Bahamas late in the week and uh, begins to make that bend back toward the Florida Peninsula late this weekend. And uh, again, uh, it's just this might produce a lot of rain for Jacksonville and Savannah and uh, ultimately parts of the inland southeast early next week. Let's see how the GFS handles this. This is the OZ run valid at 1 o'clock this afternoon. This is at 500 millibars. You see the upper highs west of the state. Uh, around here, we have kind of a night, a light north flow aloft, and down below that, not much convection. This is valid uh, this evening at 5 o'clock. And again, we, yes, there'll be showers out there and maybe a storm, but they should be pretty widely spaced. And temperatures should be warmer today with highs in the upper 80s. Last time we saw 90 in Birmingham was June 29th. Can we see 90 today? I doubt it. Some folks in West Alabama might. Now, this is tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. Looks like convection might start to increase again. But still, it's going to be scattered. Uh, scattered mostly afternoon storms. Now, the NAM has a high of only 85 tomorrow. And I'm telling you, with the wet soil moisture, I'm wondering if we do see 90. The, the GFS is at 92, but it's been running way too hot lately. But if we see 90, I think uh, today, maybe tomorrow, might be our better chance because on Thursday, convection should increase. This is uh, Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock. And you can see a surface boundary up there around Nashville dropping in and big storms down south. And we'll forecast pretty good chance of showers and storms Thursday. It won't rain all day, but it could rain, should rain at times during the day. And the highs will probably drop back a little bit into the uh, mid-80s with the increase in clouds and rain. The GFS numbers are way too hot. All right, this is Friday, and drier air tries to nose into North Alabama. Uh, along, along and north of Interstate 59. Very consistent idea. Uh, pretty strong surface high for the season near Chicago. So Friday for North Alabama, uh, north of Birmingham, him could be dry. Showers confined to areas from Birmingham south. And again, we note Chantal is down there showing up near the Bahamas. Here's Saturday as we kick off the weekend. You see uh, that uh, upper low, the uh, Tut uh, is over the northern Gulf, tropical upper tropospheric trough. You've got uh, a strong upper high that's over the Atlantic, and that's what's going to push Chantal back to the west. We'll go down below that, and this is showing moisture increasing over much of the state as a result of the Tut low. Uh, I, don't, I just don't think we stay in dry air. Uh, you know, we might get in it briefly on Friday, but I'm just not so sure – Saturday's going to be a dry day. We'll certainly need to mention a chance of showers on Saturday. Not a wash like we had, you know, a week ago, but still maybe some rain at times. Uh, Chantal is over the Bahamas. This is Sunday, and uh, Chantal is nearing uh, Melbourne and Daytona Beach, and it's uh, pretty potent looking. I mean, it, it's it's hanging in there like a rusty fish hook, and um, could very well be a tropical storm. Uh, maybe a strong tropical storm. And around here Sunday, that would suggest some moisture, but, uh, you know, not a washout, just a few scattered showers about. Uh, this is Monday. That thing is inland, just north of Lake Okeechobee and the Florida Peninsula. And around here Monday would be, uh, you know, a few showers, but nothing really widespread. And, and understand if, indeed, Chantal kind of keeps uh, – to be an organized system, we could be in a subsidence ring on the periphery of that where we get downward air motion that kind of offsets the chance of rain. Here's a week from today. In very strong high over the Atlantic, kind of pushing Chantal to the west. The heat bubble is over the nation's midsection, and down below that, the system is emerging into the Gulf of Mexico, just below Tampa Bay. Hmm. And up this way, that would suggest kind of typical... Summer weather, maybe a shower in spots, nothing widespread. And again, this is Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Let's kind of keep it going. This is uh, Wednesday evening of next week uh, at 7 p.m. local time. And that thing moves up toward Panama City and Apalachicola. Uh, and again, more than likely, it's just going to be a lot of rain. And uh, the big rains will be along and east of that low-pressure center. And that's rain where they don't need it, where they were soaked last week. 
And uh, this is Thursday the 18th, and of course, uh, Chantal would be inland, and we have a lot of tropical moisture, and that could be kind of wet. And ooh, a new system out there uh, that's down there in the southeastern Bahamas. And you know what I've got to do? I've got to check the uh, names. I, sh- I should know this. Typically, I uh, have the first names memorized. Dorian. Dorian is the D-storm this year. All right, this is the 22nd. Hey, Dorian is over the central gulf south of Mobile Bay. And the end of the forecast on the 24th, Dorian goes into the lower Texas coast down towards South Padre Island. Let's all say it together. This is pure voodoo. You talk about speculation. This is wild speculation. It probably won't happen that way. But, again, it's a sign the tropics are active, and it's going to be interesting to watch out there in the next couple of weeks. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog. Next video here by 4 o'clock or so today. If you can, catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com.